Harbin, known as China's ice city, the eastern Moscow, the oriental Paris, and a place to truly freeze your nuts off. Hi, I'm Noah, and I make videos exploring the hidden gems of China, and today we're in Harbin, China's most Russian city. Harbin was my first home in China, and today it remains my second favorite city in the country behind my current home Chengdu. With Chinese, Russian, and Japanese influences, it's truly a one-of-a-kind city in this country. Harbin is probably most famous for its unbelievably cold winters that can drop to minus 40 degrees Celsius. But today, I'm going to show you why Harbin deserves a summer visit. And we start with Harbin's most famous landmark, St. Sophia Cathedral, built starting in 1907. Today, it's the biggest Eastern Orthodox Church in the Far East. Furthermore, CNN has named it one of the 40 most beautiful places to visit in China. Before 1896, Harbin was a small fishing village. But after it was linked to the Trans-Siberian Railroad, it started to boom. And by 1917, Harbin had put itself on the map with a population of 100,000, 40% of which were Russian. Next, we're off to check out a little bit of the city. Friends, feast your eyes on one of the longest pedestrian streets in all of Asia. This is Zhongyang Dai. First built in 1898, this was called a Chinese Street. However, ironically, nowadays Zhongyang Dajie is one of the last remaining places where you can get a glimpse of Russian culture and architecture in Harbin. When you think about Zhongyang Dajie, you think about popsicles or bing bar in Chinese. In the summer, they offer a full refreshment in the heat. But actually, locals' favorite time to enjoy Bingguar is in the winter. There's something about freezing your ass off in negative degree weather, feeling no stress at all that your popsicle's going to melt, that I learned to love while living here. From Zhongyang Dajie, you can take this underground pedestrian crossing right to Harbin's River the Songhua River. The Songhua River walkway is my favorite area of Harbin. It's got a very local feel to it. A perfect evening for the local Harbiners is to grab some chuar or grilled barbecue meat on sticks and take a walk along this area. There's a kind of magic in the way this place lights up at night and in the immense length of this walkway. You could spend hours walking along here, taking in the scenery. Harbin in the winter and Harbin in the summer is comparing two different cities. Sun Island is the prime example. Sun Island is a 3,000 hectare park on the north bank of Songpa River, lying just across from downtown Harbin and it has 20 different scenic spots located on the island. Every time I visited here, I would find a new hidden scenic spot, like this beautiful temple. One of the reasons I love Harbin is the blend of the different cultures here. I think the Russian and Chinese cultures coming together is really cool. But another reason that I love Harbin is I think of it as a quaint metropolis. All the places we went to are just huge. Dongyang Dajie, Sun Island, the Riverwalk. They're all spatially very big places. That vastness doesn't overwhelm you with 
it wows you. That combined with the local charm here. Harbin has a regional China, second tier city kind of charm that cities like Shanghai and Beijing just can't offer. And the combination of the spatial vastness with the local charm just really makes it a cool place and really makes me feel at home here. That's it for Harbin, everyone. If you enjoyed the video, just drop me off a like and please subscribe to my channel and turn on your post notifications. I'm getting ready to do a trip to travel to some of China's most famous ancient towns and that's truly gonna be something spectacular. I'm really looking forward to it, so don't miss it. All right, everyone, see you for the next great China adventure. Bye. Oh, oh, oh.